In the first of two conversations with my guest today, Adapir Dorico, we discuss her role at the crowdfunding real estate debt investment platform AlphaFlow. Using proprietary algorithms to spread your investment across dozens of loans, AlphaFlow looks to protect your principal while maximizing your returns. Welcome to the National Real Estate Forum podcast, episode 213. Thank you for joining me today. I am Dr. Adam Gower, and this is the Crowdfund Project at nreforum.org, where developers, investors, and industry leaders share insights that you can use to raise capital, build wealth, and earn passive income from crowdfunded real estate deals. My conversation today with guest Adapir Dorico speaks to two key facts of business. One is that whether, we like it, whether we like it or not, the world is changing very rapidly. And the other is that in order to keep pace, you have to be prepared to evolve rapidly or otherwise get left behind. Since starting this crowdfund real estate project, I've been inundated with requests from sponsors, investors, and marketplace platforms for assistance in helping them to achieve their respective goals. As a consequence, I'm working with sponsors to help them raise money and teaching investors how to invest in real estate. It is a lot easier to invest in real estate now than it has ever been, and I've broken down the process into nine core concepts that are the keys to every real estate deal you look at, no matter what type, from residential to industrial, from office to hotels, etc. The nine keys will open the doors to understanding every project you look at and to uncovering the deals out there that are most suited to your personal goals and aspirations. You don't have to develop real estate anymore to make money in real estate. You just need to know how the developers do it. Contact me at the National Real Estate Contact, and I will send you a summary of how you can benefit from investing in crowdfunded real estate deals absolutely free. That's nreforum.org forward slash contact. This whole process for me of migrating from hands-on real estate development to one of educating others so that they can benefit from real estate investing too, in just the way that I have, is my way of evolving as the world changes. My guest today, Adapia Dorico, is also on a path to bringing her extraordinary talents and experience to a broader audience. I first spoke to Adapia when she was COO at AlphaFlow. While remaining a special advisor to the platform, she has since set up her own consulting company where she encourages others to evolve as she has done and to be the best that they can be. Today she talks about AlphaFlow. In the next episode, Adapir discusses how she has been inspired by women like herself to raise to the tops of their professions and what she is doing to help others achieve their own goals. You can find links to AlphaFlow and to Adapir's websites at the show notes to this episode at the nationalrealestateforum.org website nreforum.org forward slash alpha flow. Tell me a little bit about your uh, background, where you come from and uh, how you got to where you are now. That would be a good starting point, I think. Sure. Well, I'll see um, if I can keep it brief because I have a, a, a bit of a a background that, that spans multiple industries and, um, and time horizons. But uh, essentially, I got into real estate crowdfunding about four years ago. I joined the, the founders at the time, the three founders of Patch of Land when they were just launching. It was, it was about three months after they launched, so late 2013, early 2014. Uh, and this was really the beginning of real estate crowdfunding in general. So they was really the beginning of real estate crowdfunding in general. So they were one of the first entrants into the space. And they're an LA-based company. And so my real estate, real estate investing and crowdfunding industry expertise comes from having been a core part of that team and bringing not only awareness and demand generation to patch of land, but also raising awareness around the opportunity of real estate crowdfunding, uh, generally speaking. So I did a lot of a lot of marketing, let's say, for the whole industry. I really believe in educating people and so really talking about the opportunities for people rather than, you know, just saying, uh, hey, look at look at such and such a company, like more of an educational pitch rather than a sales pitch, you might say. Let me ask you about that then. So what is what kind of education are you talking about and who are you talking about and who are you talking about educating? 
right? There must be different um, constituencies that you're educating, both then and also now in your new role. Yeah, absolutely. From the education perspective, you know, we can maybe break it down from the perspective of um, what, what people know to be content marketing. And so with content marketing, it can be taken in all kinds of different directions. But when you're looking at bringing something new to an audience, to a market that is so new that nobody knows what it is, it really comes down to educating people about it in terms of telling them what it is, what the benefits are, what value it can bring to them. So education from from the perspective of information. And so that comes also with creating a good sense of understanding and awareness. So there are people who have done core standing and awareness. So there are people who have done courses about crowdfunding because it's a, it's a regulatory and a legal framework. So you can wrap it in very technical language. And because it is so technical when you get into the different acts within the Jobs Act and a lot of nuances, it can get it can get really overwhelmed, overwhelming quite quickly. So it really comes from a from the perspective of providing accessible, digestible information that helps somebody understand what they're looking at or talking about before you even get down all the way down to that bottom of the funnel activity of would you like what I have to offer. Okay, so I wrote down four different constituencies that I figured probably were relevant to AlphaFlow. And I'd be interested to hear what, to what extent you feel these constituent advisors. So are all four mm. of those constituencies behind the curve, if you like, as far as crowdfunding real estate, or are any of them ahead? Or what kind of education are you talking about in each, each case? Well, in the case, let's see, in the case of uh, investors, and we can we can put investors side by side with like a registered investment advisor, financial advisor, simply because they're okay. they're looking for the same thing in terms. They're different audiences and they're marketed to you differently. Mm -hmm. But we're really trying to help them understand what they would in, what they would be investing in, how it fits or doesn't fit with their um, investment profile, risk tolerances portfolio goals, you know, all the things that, that one should be looking at or looks at if, if one is a financial advisor um, before making an investment. So with them, it's, it's really explaining to them the opportunity. And in, this, in the very simplest terms, it's an investment that yields or returns X amount based on this investment. At the end of it, you receive uh, this yield, X amount of dollars, your principal back what have you. So it's really, uh, we're not, even though, for example, with AlphaFlow, where we're at today, we are registered, we're registered and regulated as a registered mm -hmm. investment advisor because of the way we structure investments um, and it provides a better alignment of interest with investors. So when, when we're talking to investors, we, we can actually go a little bit further and talk about overall portfolio with them, whereas a non-regulated, non-registered company uh, really cannot have those kinds of conversations. So it allows for broader conversation mm -hmm. with an investor, which is, it's, which is really fabulous because that allows us to help them understand better. So that, that's really what we're looking, that, that's really what we're looking at with an investor is explaining the benefits of this product within a portfolio uh, with a lender or a borrower it's a little it's a little different so with alpha mm. flow we are purchasing loans from lenders and therefore what, we are, what kind of what kind of lenders are the pay what kind of lenders sure so uh, alpha flow puts together portfolios of of private money bridge uh, lending, or they're sometimes called hard money loans. So we're talking to private money lenders or bridge lenders. Okay. Those are the those are the kinds of lenders that we're speaking to, and the lenders are are the people who have the direct relationship with the borrower who is taking out the loan. All right. And so, how are you finding they're reacting to you, and what's the you're providing a secondary market for them? Are you effectively then? Yes, effectively, that's what we're doing. Yeah. Yes. So what kind of uh, learning curve do they have, do you find? 
Well, with the lenders, it's a little bit easier of a, of a learning curve because they they are sometimes used to working with, with other capital companies that will purchase loans mm-hmm. from them or provide the secondary market liquidity. Uh, they're They're not interested, for example, in a lot of technology or the analytics or the algorithms or, or the investment management style. They, they just want to, they, they want to understand the, the partner on the other side. So they're looking at us as partners. We're looking at them from the perspective of how they underwrite, how they asset manage, how well they know their market, how well they vet their borrowers, because ultimately, if we're purchasing the loans or when we're purchasing the loans, we're taking on that risk. And so it's extremely important for us to understand the mm-hmm. process of how a lender, extremely important for us to understand the mm-hmm. process of how a lender underwrites and, and truly who they're, uh, who they're lending to. So we're really looking at them as long-term, as long-term partners. So we don't need to educate them as much on this industry of fintech or uh, online investing like that that isn't a, a part that isn't a component it's where we are and it's part of who we are but to them they're looking at us as capital partners got it so now tell me about the tech side of your business because this investment that was just announced today this uh, VC mm-hmm. investment in your platform is it seems to be from what i read very much oriented towards the technical side of what you're doing. So tell me about that because it's unusual in this space to be so focused on that, on algorithms. Mm. And to, can you explain? It could, be, it could be easy for somebody to mistake us for a robo-advisor given... Yeah, I um, saw that term. Right. What is yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, It's one of my notes. Robo-advising. What is that? I heard uh-huh. a thing on the radio this morning about uh, 3D printers from which robots will walk, right? So the prints of uh-huh. robots will walk out. So what is a robo-advisor and why are you not one? Um, that that's really funny. Well, um, I would love a, a walking robot that preferably cleans my house. That would be fantastic. Um, <laughs> Wouldn't it? But, um, but robo advising in in the financial industry is it's basically a system where um, investment management firms and some of the best known are, are called Betterment and Wealthfront and um, even some of the big big guys like Vanguard and Schwab are doing it is is they're taking certain principles of rebalancing and asset allocation and even tax loss harvesting and they're automating them. So when you invest in one of these portfolios, you uh, you fill out a questionnaire about your risk tolerances and goals and capital available and, and all all these this is a big questionnaire at the beginning. And then yeah. you invest your money and they basically automatically invest it for you in portfolios of ETFs. So if you fill out your questionnaire and essentially you come out to a three out of five in risk tolerance, you'll be placed in a moderate portfolio. So there's no human involved in allocating or investing that money. It's all done automatically and that's where the robo comes in is there's no right. human interaction in terms of putting together it's not a financial plan it's a portfolio of investments and interaction in terms of putting together it's not a financial plan it's a portfolio of investments and it it tracks etf um, okay so now and, you brought up the yeah. term so clearly there's some similarities between that and what you're doing so what where is the interplay between that and what alpha flow does yeah, no, it, it it gets brought up because people ask us if if we're like that because we do have some automation as part of what we do, and that automation comes at the point of rebalancing. So now I'll go I'll go to the beginning and explain how we're not not the same. So we have a team of very very experienced portfolio managers who are actively working with the lenders to vet them and also to to actively manage the per, the selection and purchase of the loans that alpha will buy. say people at the front end that are doing that that highly skilled active management that's real estate that's yeah. real estate 
Yes, exactly. Oh, okay. That's right. Exactly. So, okay. so, so that's it's very, very actively managed, in fact. And mm. we have we have a suite of, of uh, data and analytics, and that's part of where this venture investment goes, is to continue to build out the data and analytics, which essentially act to help our portfolio managers make better decisions, better understand mm. the markets, the loans, let's say RMBS history on certain properties, things like that. So this is the front end. Then when the, when we when an investor makes an investment, let's say they put in the minimum amount of ten thousand dollars, that money basically goes into our let's call this the technology system, and it within a matter of a few days it gets spread across a hundred loans, and then it gets consistently on a daily basis rebalanced, and that's all done with an algorithm. So where that robo out automated algo speak comes in is on the back end where we have some okay. sophisticated principles at work in terms of rebalancing money across loans as they come in and as new money comes in so as to maintain certain portfolio targets that we've set out for the product called Optimized Portfolios. Find out how you can benefit from investing in crowdfunded real estate deals at the National Real Estate Forum.org website, nreforum.org forward slash primer, and I will send you a detailed summary absolutely free. Now, is that the way that it's rebalanced across your portfolio? Is that directly related to your some kind of questionnaire, or how do you do that? Mm-hmm. We're not, we're um, not yet. So today okay. we have one one portfolio. Um, as we grow, and and part of part of where we want to grow with this is to have, let's say, a conservative, moderate, and high growth portfolio. So if somebody comes in and says, "I have yeah. a higher risk tolerance, and I would like higher yielding investments," then they would go into a higher risk portfolio, and that would change a little bit of what we're buying and uh, how we're investing it. And same with the conservative. So today we have what we would consider a moderate portfolio where the loan to value being the the most recognized indicator of risk, even though it's definitely not the yeah. only one, where that loan to value on a weighted average basis of the whole portfolio would not exceed, does not exceed 75% of loan to value okay. on a weighted average. So how do you distribute then? Are you distributing? So how do you distribute then? Are you distributing because certain loans have higher risk profile because they're in different markets or uh, because somehow you've evaluated the lender differently? Or Yeah, so loans will carry different interest rates and different loan to values based on a number of factors, mostly, mostly mm. based on uh, geography. I mean, certain markets okay. have, have different, have different uh, risk profiles. Borrowers mm-hmm. themselves will have different risk profiles. Not the lenders. I mean, the lenders themselves don't have a risk profile, but what they're originating does have a different risk profile. And so with a loan, for mm-hmm. example, um, a borrower will go to a lender and say, I've, I want to buy this property that is currently under market value because it requires extensive renovations. So I'm going to purchase it at, let's say they're going to purchase it for it at, let's say they're going to purchase it for $100,000 and they're going to put another uh, $50,000 of renovation work into it, which is a subst- would, be, would be a substantial renovation. And they think, based on their experience, their, their knowledge of the market, because, um, for example, we will not purchase loans that are made to first-time borrowers. Experience is massively important in, in the space. Mm-hmm. And also their their uh, history of working with a lender, for example, if somebody's worked with a lender multiple times and has a good track record of paying back because they're still doing business with the lender, that's a pretty good signal. So this borrower says, I'm going to purchase property for hundred. I'm going to put fifty thousand dollars in, and I think I'm going to sell it for two fifty. So they think they're going to make a pretty substantial a pretty substantial profit. So they're also coming to the table, let's say, and so an equity portion, that's where that, that loan to value comes in. So you never want a loan where a borrower does not have skin in the game because they're, 
they are not motivated to not walk away should something go sideways. You want to, you want to have an uh, an alignment of interest, right, between Correct. you and them. Yeah. 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 So how do you how does Alpha Flow make its money? How what fees do you charge? Presumably, so we, you charge fees. We do. Uh, we charge a we charge one fee, um, which is a one okay. percent asset assets under management fee. We don't charge a performance fee. In our PPM, it does state um, that we could charge other fees, which would and could arise should a loan go into a default scenario where we have to okay. um, go into legal proceedings and see legal fees and things like that. So to be clear on the PPM, that is stated, but in the simplest terms, we charge a 1%, 1% flat AUM fee. Okay, that's of assets and the management. So if you buy a loan at is this how it works then? If you buy a loan at 10%, then you will pay the investor 9%. Is, is that how you're doing it on the spread? That's correct. Okay. So now you, you mentioned a, uh, a PPM. You actually, correct me if I'm wrong, did I read this right out of here, that AlphaFlow raised money to grow through crowdfunding itself. Is that right? Or am I confusing um, that with Patch of Land? No, that, that was it. That was it, Patch of Land. Passive Land did its seed round, which rolled into a Series A by crowdfunding itself. That was a fun, fun little right. project. So that that was Passive Land that crowdfunded itself, uh, where whereas Alpha Flow is uh, venture funded. Right, and you've done. Uh, well, you also had some venture investments in Passive Land as well, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Right. So you have quite a lot of experience as well, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Right, so you have quite a lot of experience in the venture industry as well, and it's interesting because you know this new world of crowdfunding brings or marries two distinctly different industries: the you know real estate industry and tech. Can you comment on that a little bit from your perspective? So the real estate technology industry is, you could say, it's vast. Uh, I saw a term today. Some, some people in Atlanta raised a twenty-five million dollar venture fund, brand new to invest in real estate technology and they were calling it construction technology. So that's like all the way over on one end of, of what we consider real estate. So development, construction, I've seen real estate technology. I mean, Zillow and Trulia are, are real estate technology companies, truly in, in a sense. There's leasing technology, there's agent technology, and then, and then there's this real estate investment technology, if you will, which is, which is where the, the crowdfunding companies emerge for companies to seek funding from individuals at scale using the internet, and that was really largely due to um, the 506, regulation D506C. And then around 2015, 2016 is when the Title III came into effect, which is a crowdfunding regulation that allows a company to raise up to $1 million from anyone because a 506c is limited to accredited investors whereas uh, regulation cf crowdfunding title three uh, is open to anyone uh, not just accredited investors but there's a cap of a million dollars so in today's world it seems like that's not a lot of money to raise um, but mm. i'm seeing it used a lot for small businesses uh, local businesses are really using it to their advantage and there's some platforms that specialize in that and which are you using at uh, at Alpha Flow? Yeah, five so you're just accredited, so. just accredited investors. Yes, yes, accredited and, and institutional uh, investors. Yeah, institutional. That's interesting as well. So you're seeing institutional mm -hmm. investors come onto your platform. Institutional investors work with us, yes, because because we offer them, and also financial advisors and registered investment advisors, family offices. Mm. Uh, we we even have a, a, an endowment because. Yeah. To, to the investor, to the end investor, it's completely passive experience. They're not selecting loans, purchasing loans, looking at a loan tape, trying to determine right. anything about, about the loan. So especially for a registered investment advisor or, or a wealth manager, we actually look like an ETF portfolio, but for these specific loans. Um, because um, unless you're in, in the real estate industry like you are or I am, m most people really, they don't know how to evaluate a real estate. They don't know how to evaluate a real estate investment opportunity. And that's where exactly. we come in and we, and we said, well, our expertise, what we're building allows us to do that. And the value that we're giving 
is in exchange for that 1% AUM fee. And to the investor, they receive a monthly interest, uh, monthly interest income. And, Mm -hmm. and they're done after they make their investment. Basically, like they're, you know, they sit back and, and we're really taking care of, uh, of that investment. And that's why we're an investment manager. And can they sell their, uh, are they buying shares? What are they buying actually when they buy? No, they're, they're actually investing in Alphaflow Holdings. So we issue a, a K1, uh, for, for the interest income. Okay. Uh, because of the way the, because of the way the company is structured, they're investing in Alphaflow and Alphaflow Holdings, not Alphaflow Operating Company, but Alphaflow Holdings is, pur- is purchasing the loans and then distributing them to portfolios. Like every investor has a different portfolio with different allocations so, over time. Um, so they're in the technical sense, that's what they're purchasing. So do different investors yeah. get different returns then? Or does everybody get exactly the same return across the platform? Mm-hmm. It'll be different returns depending on how their loans are allocated when they come in. The returns will, will vary. They're not, they're, it's not like a fund where everyone gets the exact same return or it's blind pool. Like this is, this is very different from a fund. It doesn't have a lockup period. So the investor's principal will, will come back to the investor as underlying notes pay off. And the investor has the option of, of turning on what we call auto reinvest. So it's yeah. like a little slider. It's like a little slider button. And if they want their principal to be reinvested and consistently put to work, that can happen. Or invested and consistently put to work, that can happen. Or if they want their principal, um, if they want to take it back as the loans pay off, they can do that as well. And they can do all of this from within a, a dashboard. And so the one of the biggest differences to me anyway, on on how we're uh, very different from a fund is that with AlphaFlow, when you're invested, you have your dashboard and you literally can see every single one of your loans, all the individual details of that loan. Uh, We have it mapped. Uh, You can click in. You can really like if if someone is so inclined to really understand every single every single investment in their portfolio, like someone might do with stocks in their ETF, they can do that. With a fund, you do not have that option. That. Not that okay. I've ever, not that I've ever seen. So, if you distribute, so I'm kind of getting into the weeds, and I know we've got limited mm-hmm. time. But let me ask you one more kind of deep question, and then a, and then a mm-hmm. general one, if you don't mind. So, if I invest, so if I invest ten thousand, and you spread it out over a hundred loans, that's like what a hundred bucks a loan. Does that mean that I I can only exit? each loan one at a time as they come to maturity. So it would be a hundred bucks at a time that I could exit. I can't say, you know, in two months time, you know, I, I want to exit the whole 10,000 and take what I've got, you know, whatever interest there was in that mm-hmm. two months. I just have mm-hmm. to, if I wanted to exit, you would say, okay, you can exit, but it's going to exit over the period of, you know, 12, 14 months, however long the life cycle of all of these are, and it'll drip right. out to you over the period of that time. Is that how it works? Yeah, that that's how it works. Essentially, we don't have a liquidity option. We don't strike a nab. Uh-huh. You can't trade your funds. Um, that is a big difference between us and, let's say, a tradable liquid ETF. We don't have that liquidity option yet, although it would be very mm-hmm. interesting to to um, to figure, to solve that problem. 12-month term. So generally, the term of a loan is 12 months. In our experience yeah. and based on industry industry data, the, the duration is around seven months for most loans. So they're written on 12 month terms, but, but the duration is seven. And um, the other thing to, to clarify is that we don't distribute the loan, the, the investment pro rata. So you may, you may have $80 in one loan, you may have $50 in another, it'll, it'll move around. That's where that rebalancing algorithm comes in, because it's really trying yeah. to optimize the, the risk and the return. So the LTV and the rate so that you have the best the, the the best possible scenario the most optimized portfolio so it's not pro rata and it rebalances daily because during the period where we're creating the portfolio um it's called a stabilization period there may be new loans that come in and that and we'll, the money the algorithm is called a stabilization period there may be new loans that come in and that and we'll, the money the algorithm will move money into a new loan if it makes sense for your portfolio 
Right. So that's the link that I'm missing. If I can liquidate my portfolio when the loans come due, how do you do that mm-hmm. when my money is being spread out across 100 loans and it's changing mm-hmm. every day? That's, that's, mm-hmm. sorry, that's just the one thing that I'm not quite getting. Yeah. No, it's a, it's a great question. So in the first 45 days, of stabilization, that's when that rebalancing really happens. And the length of your portfolio will be the, the latest maturity date of a, of a loan that you're invested in. Once that happens, as the algorithm rebalances, let's say, like let's say two months later, it rebalances a little bit, it won't rebalance into anything that has a long, that has a maturity date past the maturity date that was set. For the, for the whole that's portfolio right. during the day. Got it. Wow, very interesting. Okay, so let me ask you one kind of global question because I know you're now looking at your clock and people are banging on your door, I've no doubt. (laughs) Um, So uh, where do you think the industry is going, Adapir? You know, this is very nascent stages. You started with Patch of Land, uh, you know, however many years ago, four years ago. The market Mm -hmm. has only been going up. This is a constant, there's a question I've been asking a few people. Yeah. Uh, It's not going to continue to only go up. So where, where do you mm-hmm. think the industry is going? How big can it get? And what do you think is going to happen when we eventually do hit that cyclical wall? So that, no, it's a, it's a great question. So housing prices have been going up. Margins for borrowers have been coming down in certain markets. But globally, not every market in the U.S on the residential property side where these, these loans are based on residential properties, not every market has peaked. Some are just, so there are still, and this is the thing about this industry, is that there are still a lot of opportunities. There's pocket opportunities and having the expertise and the insight and the foresight into those markets becomes really important. So when we're looking, when we're looking at that, that's a big part of it. So we're going to look at the markets that we want to go into. And some of the, some of the data that we're looking at as well is really based on historical prices of the underlying assets. So part of our analytics suite allows us to look at the, let's call it this. So we're stress testing a market. So, and we're stress testing each loan against the, the worst housing market downturn, which as everyone knows, it's the 2008, 2000, between 2008 and 2010. So we're really looking, we're really doing a stress test of each loan against the worst. How bad it got. Well, then how bad it got. And so the worst it got in that period, and and we're looking at a 20, how bad it got. And so the worst it got in that period, and and we're looking at a 25-year period, the worst that it got Mm. is where we're basing our comfort level on the loan to value. Because ultimately, Mm. you have to look at every loan from the worst case scenario, which is we may have to own that property and sell Mm -hmm. it. And so that's why we're looking at what the lowest price was in any 12 to 18 month period in the last 25 years. And that's where we get a different understanding of in the worst case, what could we sell it for and ultimately recover the principal. So we're really more interested in protecting the downside than we are in maximizing yield. Um, at least for this moderate portfolio, I mean, one day it'd be great to have, like we talked about, have a, a high ri- higher risk, higher return portfolio. That's a different game. That's a different investment altogether. Right. Um, yeah, not losing principal, of course, but mm-hmm. in these portfolios, it's pretty straight and narrow the way we're, we're evaluating markets and um, the st- stress testing each loan against each property. So last question, where do you think alpha flow is going to be in five years and in 10 years? Well, what's your aspirations for the company? Wow, five years, that feels like such a long time. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it is. As fast as things are changing, it's, an, it's a, it's a yeah. lifetime away. So let's it, feels like years, a lifetime. it feels right. like a lifetime. It feels like a lifetime, what's happened to us. But ultimately, AlphaFlow is starting with the single family, hard money, private money loan. We're an asset management platform, and you and I both know there's so many opportunities in real estate, different kinds of real estate investments. So ultimately, AlphaFlow can take the expertise that it's building in the single family, other segments of the market, as quickly, for example, in, in the next maybe 6 to 12 months, looking at multifamily, looking at small balance commercial, potentially looking at some equity projects, and so on and so forth. So as we build 
our reputation as we build the data, as we build the analytics, we can look at evaluating other properties and other investment opportunities for our investors. Very nice. Uh, Adapir, thank you so much. I, I've got so many more questions I'd love to ask you. Maybe we, can do a, uh, maybe we can do a redux over the next few months, if that's okay with you. I'd love to have another Absolutely. chat and see how things are going. In the meantime, mega congratulations on the news thank today. It's so lovely much. news. It thank must be very you. reassuring. And uh, mm -hmm. thank you for your time, and I wish you the very best, and I look forward to talking to you next time. Uh, likewise. Thank you so much. There are a great many ways to invest in real estate and the range of options is growing daily. Every site real estate and the range of options is growing daily. Every site and every platform has its own methodology and strategy, for which each has its own pros and cons, depending on what you're looking for. My guest Adapia Dorico's AlphaFlow has their own unique take. This is how they do it. A borrower, somebody who wants to do a fix and flip maybe, goes to a local private lender, not a bank, who makes a short term high interest loan to them. That private lender then sells the loan to AlphaFlow that in turn pools the loan with hundreds of others. Your investment with AlphaFlow is then split into individual pieces across dozens and dozens of loans. The idea is that by doing this, your risk of loss is mitigated, while at the same time your returns are maximized. If you would like more information about this and other strategies you can use to make money in real estate investment, please contact me at the nationalrealestateforum.org website, nreforum.org forward slash contact and I will send you a summary of the highlights absolutely free. That's NRE. That's nreforum.org forward slash contact. In the next podcast, I have the pleasure of speaking to Adapia a second time. As I mentioned, she's set up her own consulting practice. She's one of the most accomplished female entrepreneurs in the country and is a role model for all of us who are seeking to be the best that we can be. Her conversation with me about her vision and aspirations to help others find the same success as she has is as personal as it is inspirational. You can be sure not to miss it by subscribing to the podcast on whatever platform you use to listen to podcasts by going to the nationalrealestateforum.org website, nreforum.org. I have included one-click subscription links that you can find about halfway down the homepage. Thanks again for tuning in. And thank you also to Adapir Dorico, former COO at AlphaFlow, for sharing your time with me today. Until next time, this is Dr. Adam Gower, signing off.